Oh, oh, Gardens Kids Department. Oh, how we miss having worship with you every Sunday and Wednesday. We just thank God for the opportunity to have children of God in these classrooms uh, learning about Jesus on their level. Hey, we just want to let you know we miss you. Can't wait to get back with you and have a great time in the Lord learning about Jesus. God bless you, Charlie. You want to say something? All right, let's wait. Wave at him, Charlie. All righty. <laughs> Love you. Hey, old gardens kids. Woo! So good to be in your homes today via the internet. As you all know, we have been away from each other for a while. And as you heard Dr. Day just a minute ago, he's really missing you. I'm really missing you. We're just missing you guys. Um, so I wanted to do something a little special for you guys because we've been having worship for the big people but we've done nothing for the babies so this particular video is for you guys only i'm going to start with a quick word of prayer say a little scripture and then we're going to do some songs together if that's okay with y'all dear god we thank you for the old gardens kids i pray right now god that you just continue to cover them and continue to protect them, God, um, as they go through their days at home with their parents. I pray that every day is just amazing, God. We thank you and we give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So the scripture that I've decided to share is one of my favorite scriptures. It's one that I learned when I was a itty bitty girl. And it's John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us so much that he gave his only son. So we're going to start with Jesus loves the little children. You guys are more than welcome to join in with me as I sing this. I need to hear you guys, even though I'm not like, like physically in the room. I want to hear you guys through the record, okay? So, let's try this. Hey! Jesus loves the little children All the children of the world Red and yellow, black and white They are precious in His sight Jesus loves the little children of the world precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. One more time. Let me hear you sing it. Y'all need to sing a little louder than that. you guys would love to sing because we always sing it on Wednesday night. Can you tell me what song that is? How Great Is Our God! Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be another opportunity for you guys to sing along with me. I need you to sing loud and sing proud, okay? Alright. Come on, clap with me. Uh, how great is our God Sing with me, how great is our God. All will sing, how great, how great is our God. Come on, y'all. 
Make sure you pay attention. Well, until we meet again, love you guys. Bye. Hello, Oak Gardens, and hello, OG Kids. I have missed you so much. I miss all the hugs and just seeing your faces every day. Um, I know your parents have probably seen you a lot more in these last couple of weeks and uh, I just wanted to touch base and say I love you I miss you and I just wanted to go ahead and give you another lesson hello I just wanted to give us a refresher on one of our stories the handsome foolish king Samuel Israel's judge and leader was old. He made his sons judges over Israel to take his place in God's service. But Samuel's sons were wicked. They loved money and used their power to get money dishonestly. The people of Israel suffered because of the sons of wickedness. The courts were unfair. People had to pay Samuel's sons every time they wanted help. Something had to be done. One day, the elders of Israel gathered together and asked Samuel for help. Give us a king to judge us, the elders demanded. They did not want Samuel's wicked sons to judge them. They wanted a king just like all the nations around them. Samuel was angry. Israel already had a king. God Almighty, the Eternal One, ruled Israel. Long ago, he set them free from slavery in Egypt, opening the Red Sea for their escape. Then he had given Israel their beautiful land. When Samuel prayed, the Lord said, they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. They have served other gods. Heed their voice and make them a king. God told Samuel to warn the people that their earthly king would take their money and taxes, help himself to their best fields and vineyards, 
order their sons into his armies and command their daughters to work for him. But the people wanted a king anyway. God led Samuel to a young man who was very handsome, very shy, and very tall, a whole head taller than anyone else. His name was Saul. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, this one shall reign over my people. Obediently, Samuel anointed Saul as king of Israel. When he presented Saul to the people of Israel, they cried, long live the king. Soon, King Saul was tested. The Ammonites, who hated Israel, surrounded an Israelite city and threatened to put out every man's right eye. What a cruel plan! News of the threat reached King Saul. He got his army ready. When the two armies met, Samuel destroyed the Ammonites and rescued the city. King Saul gave God the glory saying, today the Lord has accomplished salvation in Israel. God gave Saul a great victory that day, but Saul did not always honor God. One day before fighting the Philistines, Saul offered a sacrifice to God. He knew that was Samuel's job. He knew God wanted him to wait until Samuel came to do it. But Saul disobeyed God. When Samuel arrived, he told Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God. Now your kingdom shall not continue. Saul may have thought it was a small sin, but disobedience to God is always serious. Another time, God ordered Saul to destroy the wicked people of Amalek. But Saul and the people let King Agag of Amalek live. They also kept valuables, sheep and oxen. Saul said they had kept these things to sacrifice to the, to the Lord. Samuel told Saul, to obey is better than sacrifice. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. Saul was very sorry for his sin, but it was too late. The rest of his life was unhappy because he would not obey the Lord. The Handsome Foolish King is a story from God's word that can be found in 1 Samuel 8 through 16. That is the end. Charlie, you got a song you wanna sing? Is there a special song you wanna sing? What about he's got the whole world in his hand? You gonna do that one? Okay. So y'all can sing this song with us on the count of three. One, two, three. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 You gonna sing with me? He's got Charlie Gray. In his hands, he's got Charlie Gray. In his hands, he got Charlie Gray. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Now we're gonna pause and you're gonna say your name. He has, he has, in his hands, he's got, in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Is that cool? Cool. Well, Charlie and I are going to sign out. You going to say bye to the people? 
Charlie says bye. Well, OG kids and family, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, again, I miss you all. I want to give you all um, big hugs, squeezes, because Miss Jones misses you and she loves you. Have a blessed week and stay safe, stay in, and be blessed. Have a great day.